Hey, good morning, everyone. Just want to uh, go through as we continue God's, uh, th through God's Word in Second Chronicles. We're covering chapters 26 through 28 today, uh, but I just had a, a very brief point to make, and uh, it, it's singular point. Instead of going through the entire text, just something jumped out at me, and it's when godly people uh, get bullheaded, <laughs> for lack of a better term, stubborn, strong-willed, bullheaded. Uh, and, and so we're going to find out from a good king, uh, Uzziah. Uh, he did awesome things. He, he restored the temple. He built Jerusalem up, put uh, towers by the gates, uh, strongholds so that they could defend themselves. And uh, he, he really, uh, uh, in verse 14 it says, uh, he pre uh, prepared for them throughout all the host uh, shields and spears and helmets and Habergens and bows and slings to cast stones. So he got the army ready to defend, to, to stand up for Judah, uh, for Israel. And uh, he, he made all kind of amazing things here in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, but it says in verse 16, But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Now, uh, Wonderful that he wanted to worship, but the fact is that his that this was pride. Uh, his heart was lifted up when he was strong, and uh, to his destruction. And so uh, sometimes we get carried away thinking, uh, because God has blessed us in a certain area or portion or aspect of his ministry, that all of a sudden we're qualified to delve into other things that he hasn't called us into. And this is a case here. He was not—he was not a priest. He was not to burn incense on the altar. He was to be the king. He was to provide for the uh, common welfare and defense of his people. He was to lead them in following after the true and living God, in worshiping the true and living God, and giving sacrifices and offerings to the true and living God, uh, in ministering to the true and living God. But he was not to perform uh, the, the the sacrifices in the temple to to slay the animals on the altar, to burn the incense, to change out the showbread from day, uh, in the holy place day by day. Uh, he was to be a king and, and, and a worshiper of God, but he was not to perform the, uh, the rituals and the uh, carefully prescribed duties of a priest because he wasn't a priest. And so what happens for you and me is uh, we get successful in something uh, and then all of a sudden we start looking around at other people that God has called to ministry and empowered, and we start thinking, oh, I could do that too. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm a Sunday school teacher, but I think I could also um, be a song leader, or uh, I'm a, um, I drive a bus and bring kids to church on Sunday, but I think I could also write a book. And uh, those things aren't wrong in and of themselves if that's what God's calling us to do. But in this case, uh, the king's heart was lifted up in him, and he, through pride, thought, I can do what the priests are doing. And it wasn't, it wasn't to him. It said that the priests, in verse 18, withstood Isaiah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron." that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord thy God. So basically get out of here in the nicest possible terms. The priest said, this is not for you. This is not your duty. You haven't been consecrated. You haven't been set, a, set aside. You're not a son of Aaron. You're not a priest. It's, it's going to be to your dishonor. And uh, they didn't even mention the other part. It's going to be to your harm. Uh, so not only would it be dishonorable, but it would be to his harm. And so it says in verse 19, Then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. So he was insistent. He snatched up an, uh, a censer and said, I'm going to get about this. I think, uh, I think I'm qualified. I think I'm capable. I think uh, I'm good enough. I think because I want to do it, therefore it ought to be done, etc., etc., and it says, and while he was wroth with the priests, this wasn't their fault. They were just simply telling him the truth. Uh, they were just simply warning him about doing something disreputable and something that would be uh, disgraceful to him and to his God. But he was wroth with them for, you know, you hear the term kill the messenger. Well, he, he, he didn't kill them, but he was, he was angry. He was, he was slaying them in his heart, if you will. Uh, and it says, while he was wroth... 
with the priests of leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. Now, here's the, um, here's the application of this. The will is in the front of the head, and that's why the leprosy um, uh, appeared there. That, that was a picture of the sin of his mind. And so often uh, you and I have, have different uh, areas of stronghold in our minds that uh, we, either the enemy has direct contact and ability, to, it's almost like he's running a, a steering wheel and he's able to turn us simply by whispering certain things into our minds or bringing up certain emotions in us and causing us to err uh, pertaining to the truth of God and uh, the truth of God as revealed in the scripture and the truth of what God wants us to be about as Christians. Uh, so either the enemy has direct strongholds where he's calling the shots or places where we have come into agreement with him and uh, in a sense we've taken up the habits that he would have wanted us to do anyway if he had direct control. So it, it looks much the same. The, the outcome is much the same whether we've gone astray of our own volition or whether we've allowed the enemy to take over a portion of our mind and our lives and, and have his way with it. Uh, and so this uh, leprosy indicates that the king, uh, through pride, his will was uh, affected or infected, more, more appropriately. His will was infected. And uh, the, the human heart, when the, when the scripture talks about believing from our heart, and when the, when the uh, scripture talks about loving God with all our heart, the heart is made of three components, the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's what you think or what you know, uh, what you want, and how you feel. And in salvation, all, of, all three of those come together. When a man uh, believes on the Lord Jesus Christ to the saving of his soul, he uh, comes to know that he's a sinner. He, he comes to know the truth of the fact that he's a sinner, that Christ died to pay for all sin, including his, and that faith in Christ uh, will be the, uh, the mechanism by which that payment is applied to his personal account. So he, he knows those facts, and then he wants that. He doesn't want to be lost and on his way to hell anymore. He wants to be saved. He wants to be uh, under God's uh, shelter and protection and provision and love and grace and mercy. He wants to get out of death and into life. He wants to get out of darkness and into light. So he knows the way, and he wants it, and then the emotions come along. Uh, when he makes that, when a person makes that decision to trust, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, and God uh, fulfills his promise. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. He fulfills that promise to wash their sins away and lift the burden of guilt, shame, sin, uh, despair, death, confusion, uh, fear, all of that. Just lift that off of the, the, uh, the new child of God, the new believer in Christ. Then they are overcome. Well, maybe not overcome, but there is some emotion. Uh, for some people, they might still have dry eyes and just feel something deep within them, and that's an emotional response. And other people, they might just uh, fall on their faces and become blubbering idiots, just overcome with the joy and the relief of having been saved and have their sins forgiven. Uh, but but in, in any case, all three of those components come into play, the mind, the will, and the motion, and emotions. What I know, what I want, and how I feel. So he set his will against, uh, against God's command. And because of that, the leprosy, it says... Uh, even rose up in his forehead. That's where his will was. His will was infected. Now what happens to you and me, the New Testament says that we can um, have our consciences seared by a hot iron. If we willfully and knowingly go into sin, and that over and over and over again, and God sends reproof, and God sends correction, and God, God sends chastisement, and God sends his love and his grace and his mercy to try to entice us to repent, and we just keep going back to the same thing over and over and over again. The scripture says that's like uh, applying a hot branding iron to our conscience, and every time we go into that sin willfully, uh, it, it becomes less offensive to us, it becomes less uh, fearful, 
fearful or fearsome that we're opposing Almighty and living God, it becomes, uh, it affects us less, it, it gives us uh, pause of concern and reflection less, and pretty, pretty soon or however far into the process you want to go, it just, you don't even notice it anymore. And uh, I, I, would, I would dare to say that there may be things in all believers' lives that are sin, but that we've just, you know, maybe we've grown up in a culture where we've seen it over and over, or maybe the first few times we did it personally, uh, it, it, was, it was an affront to us, and the Holy Spirit in us convicted us, but then we just kept going back and, and uh, time after time, and uh, I'm thinking of, you know, there are things that, Maybe that today Christians uh, or so-called Christians today watch on television that, uh, you know, maybe someone two or three generations ago, if they saw that on their TV, the thing would be in the fireplace instantly. They wouldn't, no questions asked. We're not having that stuff in our house. But today, uh, because where consciousness have been seared over and over by seeing things on television and seeing things on the Internet, that it just doesn't register anymore, or maybe hearing music. You know, there's uh, there's sometimes that songs come on the radio, and I start bopping my head until I actually listen to the lyrics, and I think, what in the world am I listening to? But uh, but we have our consciences seared, and, we, and it just doesn't affect us anymore. So I want to encourage all of us uh, to learn from King Isaiah and actually ask God to... Uh, reinvigorate or to quicken our consciences by his Holy Spirit and make things that are sinful once again sinful to us so that we are warned so that we are uh, informed before we run headlong <laughs> or rush headlong willfully into sin that that there's something there that warns us and 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 alerts us to the fact that we're going the wrong way and that we that that we're gonna bring calamity uh, disrepute and disgrace both to ourselves and to God and that he's going to have to chastise us, he's going to have to correct us, and or, or maybe just let us have the natural consequences of whatever it is. And so uh, I just pray that we have not hardened our necks and hardened our wills so much that if God looks at the front of our forehead, that it looks like leprosy to him. I pray he sees yielded, um, pliable, uh, willing subjects, willing friends, willing disciples who who want to be taught and change and transform through the renewing of our minds so that we allow what God wants for us to become our own will, what we want for us in response to God's goodness and mercy. Amen.